I'm Bill Hubscher. And I'm Lori Meggs. Today on Focus on Marshall, we'll find out how floating on one of these little things can help us learn more about rendezvous and docking in space. But first, we're going to visit a lab where they're predicting the weather on other planets. We're here in the Terrestrial and Planetary Environments Team Lab. Actually, we're in Barry Roberts' office, but this is your lab, right? Yeah, that's correct. And what we do here in my team is we provide atmospheric data to the engineering community. Uh, that's important because for aerospace vehicles to get to space, you have to fly through the atmosphere. For instance, when you're launching from a surface of a planet or Earth, you have to go through the atmosphere. Same thing when you come back from orbit, you have to fly through the atmosphere if you want to land on the surface of a planet or come back to Earth. And that's important. What we provide the engineers is, is data that simulates the atmosphere, variations they could see within the atmosphere. You've designed actually a model for this, right? Yeah, actually we have a whole family of models. We call the Global Reference Atmospheric Models, or GRAM for short. And uh, what those do is pro provide variations or simulate variations you could see in the factors such as wind speed, direction, temperature, humidity, and pressure. Um, as a matter of fact, here we have a plot of, uh, of density perturbations you could see in Earth's atmosphere. <laughs> All I see are squiggly lines, Barry, <laughs> but I know it means something to you. Yeah, it does look like a, a, a mess on there, but that's very important to the shuttle engineers because uh, when you're designing the vehicle or planning a mission to go from, again, launch or also for landing, you want to consider variations you could see in the density of Earth's atmosphere. That's very important, again, to get from point A, which might be your launch place, to point B, a place you want to be in orbit. So you have to account for the variations you could see in the density of Earth's atmospheres, and that's just one of the applications of the GRAM model. Yeah, you're also working with a very important Mars mission right now. Yeah, that's true. As a matter of fact, we just recently began supporting the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, mission, and uh, they use our Mars GRAM 2005 model. As a matter of fact, Hillary Just and the team is supporting them. All right, let's go see what she has going on. Hillary Just has actually been very busy lately in support of the exploration of Mars with those atmospheric models we were talking about. Tell us a little bit about how that's working. Yes, we're currently supporting the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, also known as MRO, and we're supporting that through the use of the MarsGram 2005 model. Currently, MRO is in a process called aerobraking, in which the orbiter starts in a highly elliptical orbit, and through a process of dipping lower in the atmosphere of Mars in height above the surface, we can cause it to slow down and also the orbit becomes more circular in nature. The reason why aerobraking is so important is it conserves propulsion that's on the spacecraft. We want to use as low amount of propulsion on the spacecraft during this whole process as we can. So how does your atmospheric model help in that process? Um, right now we get data, every periapsis of the orbiter, we get data and we take that data and run MarsGram for that position in the atmosphere, and we take the MRO data, compare it to the MarsGram data, and determine if we're on track where the navigational team wants to be, or if we're too high or too low, and then provide that information to them so that they can make a decision on whether or not they want to change where we're at in the atmosphere. And this is a daily process, weekends too. You're, you're meeting with them every day. Yes, seven days a week, every day at one o'clock. We're on the telephone. <laughs> now, you've also done some atmospheric models of other bodies in the solar system, right? Yes, we've, we've done models for Venus, Titan, and Neptune. Well, looking forward to, to maybe exploring those areas as well someday. Yes. Thanks very much, Hillary. Thank you.